Data tables are one of the most common components found in web applications. No matter what the app does, there's probably a data table somewhere used to display and filter some kind of records. In this video, we'll see how we can create one with Laravel and Inertia.js. As a starting point, we have a contacts route that calls the index action on the contacts controller. The action then paginates the records and renders the contacts view component. In the view component, we receive the contacts object as a prop, and then we are using it to loop through the data and display the rows. Scrolling down, we also have a pagination component that renders the pagination links. All of that translates to this nice table. What I want to do is to be able to sort the records by specific columns, as well as using this search box we have here. So let's start. The first thing I'm going to do is to set up a V model for the search field. So data, return, and since I know we'll have other parameters to send, I'll group them under a params object. So params, search, and the default value will be null. Let's set up the V model. And then the next step is to set up a watcher that calls the contacts endpoint whenever the params change. So we'll have params, handler, and set deep to true. Inside the handler, we'll call the contacts endpoint using inertia. Pass in the parameters and the following inertia options. If we go back in the browser, refresh, and type in a search term, we see that we are sending the search parameter to the server. Let's go inside the controller and update our query to make use of it. And we'll have query equals contact query. And if we receive a search term, so if request search, we'll apply the following where clause. Finally, we need to replace contact with our new query. If we go back in the browser and try the search again, so let's say Roxanne, it surely works. Let's move on to making some of these columns sortable. We can do that by passing two additional query parameters. One parameter to specify the field and another one to specify the direction we want to sort the records. So we'll have field and direction. The next step is to add a method that changes the field we want to sort by and toggles the direction from ascending to descending. So we'll have methods, sort, we'll pass the field name, we'll update the params, so this params.field equals the field we pass in, and we'll toggle the direction. So if this params direction equals equals ascending, we'll set it to descending, otherwise it will be ascending. What we need to do now is to call this sort method whenever the user clicks on one of the fields we want to sort by. So let's say we want to sort by name and city. Add click, sort, we'll pass the name, the field, and do the same for the city. So what should happen now is whenever we click on name, the sort method will be called, which will update our params object. And since we have a watcher set up, it will cause this handler method to execute and send an inertia request to the server that will update our table with new data. Let's go in the browser, refresh, click the name field. We can see the link changing, so it works. What we need to do now is to go inside our contacts controller and use the field and direction params to sort the records. Here we can say something like if request has field and direction, query order by, we pass in the field, so request field and the direction, request 
direction. And this should work. So let's say refresh. And here it is. We are filtering by the city and then by the name. However, there's a small problem. We need to validate these parameters, otherwise this happens. Or this. And that's not good. So let's set up some validation rules. We can say request, validate, and we'll have direction, which needs to be either ascending or descending, and field needs to be city, or let's say name, or city. Now, if we try to do the same, it will simply redirect back. Let's also add some icons to highlight the direction we're sorting. I'll paste in some SVGs and say vif params.field equals equals name and params.direction equals equals ascending. We'll do the same thing for the descending, except it will be desk here. Refresh the browser, click on the name, and here it is. Let's align the icons, and we can do so with class inline flex with full justify between. And let's also grab the padding. Refresh again, and here it is. Let's grab these and do the same for the city. We'll just say city. As well here. Remove the padding and refresh the browser. And here it is. Finally, we have two more problems to solve. If I type in Charlie, copy and paste this link in another tab, the page loads, the records are filtered, but there is no search term here and also the icon is hidden. The reason for that is that our component doesn't really know what filters we have applied. We can fix that by sending the filters from our controller to our view component and set the initial value for the parameters. So we can go to context controller and here we can say filters and request all and pass in the keys search field and direction now back to our component we need to define this filters and here we can set the initial value so this filters dot search this filters dot field and this filters dot direction now if we go back in the browser and refresh, we have Charlie here and the direction here. So let's say loop, change the sorting direction, and here it is, loop and the direction. The other problem is that if I delete the search string, the search parameter still appears in the URL, and that's a bit awkward. We can remove it here in the handler. We can do let params equals this params. And what we need to do now is to map through the object keys and delete those keys that are empty. We can do that like so. Object.keys, this will give us the keys of the object for each key. And then if the key is empty, We delete it. And of course, we need to pass in this new params object. Go back in the browser and refresh, search for Angela. And if we delete the query string, the search parameter is removed. Of course, there's a more elegant way of doing this, 
and that is by using Lodash's pick by method. And this does basically the same thing. Remove all this, go back in the browser, refresh, type in a search term, delete, and the field is removed. Finally, it would be a good idea to throttle our requests to avoid sending too many of them. And we can do that with load dash as well. Throttle, import, pass in function, and let's say 150 milliseconds. Go back, refresh, everything is still working. And that's how you can create a data table using Laravel and Inertia.js. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, click the bell button and all that stuff. Bye!